for this week's video, we wanted to do something a little bit different. Uh, we are actually in our home, in our basement apartment mm -hmm. at Candace's family's house, uh, where we call our home base. You can see Riley is quite relaxed in her natural environment between us on the couch. Um, so for this video, we wanted to do some of the things we learned. The entire month of October, we were on the road. During that month, we were actually camping for... Basically three weeks yeah. of the month, close to three weeks of the month. We've made a list of things that we learned. We also made a list of food that was easy to do while we're camping. And we're also going to end this video with a what we plan on doing during 2023. By the way, if I sound weird, I've been sick like all week and I'm just getting over being sick. I think I sound weird right now, but my throat is like <clears throat> scratchy and, and I'm clearing my throat a lot, so I apologize. Okay, so number one and one of the big draws of going camping is how cheap camping typically is. So while camping is typically cheap, especially when you're camping in the winter, firewood adds up to be quite, quite expensive. Um, especially if you want to have a fire pretty much every night or you're cooking over the fire for dinners at night. Um, obviously we kind of took into consideration that we would be buying firewood, but I don't think we really had any idea how much firewood we would end up buying and that added greatly onto the nightly cost of camping most nights. There were a few nights here and there where we didn't have a fire. Um, so the next thing is going to be always be able to clean your dog's feet. Um, she, <laughs> yes, we're talking about you. She went on every hike with us. Um, sometimes she spent in the backpack, but a lot of the time she was just walking around and obviously walking on the campgrounds. She got pretty dirty. So we got this thing called the Mud Buster. And inside this cup, it's dirty. I can't do this. Inside are a bunch of little fingers. And you fill this with warm water if possible. But a lot of times we just use room temp water. And you just put their paw in and out. And it washes it. And then we had a towel because she would just get filthy. Camping when there's a low of 20 degrees at night can be a bit challenging. Mainly for me, not so much for Andrew. He didn't really, he didn't really care. But um, yeah, just one. You don't want to get out of your sleeping bag once you're in your sleeping bag to go outside and pee. Um, two, it was really annoying for me in the mornings because I'd schedule myself to work, and you can't really work typing on the computer because your fingers will freeze if it's 25 degrees outside. So it just, it just brings some, some challenges. Shower wipes are your friend. And I never considered myself one of those people that had to be like overly clean. And I was like, shoot, I cannot shower for two weeks. That's going to be no problem whatsoever. <laughs> now that didn't work. We bought these disposable shower wipes um, that you get wet with water and they like turn sudsy and then you just kind of wipe yourself down and then as you wipe yourself down the soap like disappears you don't have to dry yourself you're dry when you're done because the towel like cleans you and then dries you at the same time and those were crucial pack as a minimalist um usually it wasn't an issue because we could park like right next to where we were setting up the tent but there were a couple of times we had a park down at like the Airbnb host home and then in a nice way the you had to walk a little ways up a hill to get to your campsite so it was very private and like you couldn't see the host home or anything from where you were but it was a, a bit of a walk if you had like any kind of luggage or stuff with you it would have been much better if you were more packed for like a 
backcountry camping type experience where you can just like we could each like throw a backpack on our shoulders and that would be everything we needed but we had like the trunk full of our tent stuff and then like our clothes were packed in just like normal suitcases so we didn't even bring those up we just like went down to the car every morning to go get a new outfit we got like a bag of like bathroom shower stuff um yeah so that was just a lot of trips up a hill a ways um so do your research if you're camping somewhere where you can't like actually pull your car right up to the site um i would advise camping more like you're going on a backcountry camping type adventure and maybe try to get as much stuff as you can in a backpack so the next one is that slip-on shoes are incredible you know like the shoes that old people wear like old guys wear yeah they're they're incredible um the idea was we would wear them in the campsite you get out of the tent you slip your shoes on you do whatever you need to do you go back in the tent you slip them off and you don't want to wear tents in your shoe and you don't want to you wear, don't want to wear tents in your shoe that wouldn't be comfortable you don't want to wear shoes in your tent so whatever you can wear that are easy to go on and easy to go off in the campsite is just a nice nice thing to have another thing to note is that trying to do lots every day and we were trying to like film stuff every day and I was also working lots of days um, we got really tired and camping is tiring in general um, so just know that it's okay to take a day and not do much of anything just chill around the campsite yeah so just know you don't have to be doing something literally every every single day and it is okay to take take a day off and just just hang out mm -hmm. relax another thing is protect your electronics from the cold this was something that, that candace was worried about day one before we even left well i was just very concerned that your computer wasn't supposed to get below freezing and i was like well it's gonna be like 19 degrees is my like screen gonna like crack or something um apparently it's not really an issue unless you don't want to use it yeah you don't want to boot it up when it's cold yeah you don't want to like start it up and it's like freezing because then the computer's heating up and then it can create like moisture in the something something so what i did at night was i well i have like a insulated sleeve thing for my laptop so i had it in there which protects it a little bit but then i also had it in another bag and then I would wrap that bag in like a very thick like Carhartt jacket or something like that and it would just like sleep bundled up in there at night and then before I used it in the mornings so I kind of just like <laughs> like hug it hug it to me and like try to warm it up a little bit before I just was like okay let me let me start this up so it did get a chance to warm up a little bit um propane cost can vary quite greatly um we paid anywhere from like five dollars for a bottle to 11 or 12. and she's talking about the one pound cylinders those little tiny green one pound cylinders that we used on our tent heater yeah so that's another cost to factor in if you're using a tent heater if you're camping in the winter um I think like two got us through a night but again that can add up when you're staying somewhere for four nights in a row the next one is always keep some sort of weapon in the tent um, so we always kept a few different things in our tent uh, just to keep us safe honestly from animals we weren't really worried about people uh, we had a couple cans of bear spray we had a very small hatchet and we also had a little metal shovel um, you never know. Um, that one time in Newfield where the bear came through our campsite, I was super happy to have that bear spray and a shovel just in case I had to, you know, knock the bear in the head. Always charge your devices when you were out and about for that day. We had several like battery packs that we would charge with like USBs at night in the tent. Um, 
but if you just plug as many things as you can in when you're like going across town to go find dinner for that night or if you're going on a hike just charge the stuff while you're in the car. This next one honestly Candace should probably say but I'll <laughs> go ahead and say it anyway. Um, there's lots of noises in the woods and 99% of them can be Our explained. Ticket, yeah. No. Um, they're just animals. Squirrels and chipmunks sound like cattle running through the trees or through the leaves. Um, they're just loud. So every little noise you hear is not trying to kill you. What I would recommend is actually familiarize yourself with some noises of common animals in the area that you're going to stay in, um, just so you're not surprised. Another thing to note would be that setting up your tent and your campsite and also packing it up generally takes a lot longer than you think it's going to. I would say packing up takes a lot longer than setting up, but um, I feel like there is a couple mornings where I felt like we had like a ton of time. I was like, oh, we've got like two hours before we want to leave or before checkout is, and then we were like literally packing up like the last like 10 minutes somehow still. Um, so just just add some extra time more than you more than you think it's going to take hand washing laundry takes a long time and letting your clothes dry take even longer um, so we had a little portable sink that we bought to do dishes and stuff in and i actually ended up using those to wash mm -hmm. in wolf's neck i did i don't know four loads of laundry that way like four little sinks full of laundry <clears throat> um one it took forever it was just a, a tire uh, and two it took three or four days to dry, um, and that was after checkout. So we had to pack damp clothes, take them to the next place, and then hang them out again. And then I forgot to bring them in before a thunderstorm, and then they all got wet again. So. And things don't really dry when you try to dry them like, over a fire. I thought that might work. I was trying to like dry like the small things, like no, pretty much. Pretty much just makes them smell like campfire smell. Yeah. Pack a lot more socks than you think you'll need. I think I packed it enough socks for like a week or something, thinking like, oh, they're like easy to wash. You know, they're they're small, and I don't need that many socks or whatever. But no, because they get disgusting. Like if you're hiking, I mean, like your feet are sweating. Maybe just my feet sweat excessively. I'm not sure. Um, and then they take forever to dry so do not count on like you can wash them easily but don't count on them being like dry the next morning for you especially if it's 25 degrees outside um this might be an an odd one and maybe this is just me but i would bring a ski mask next time i was going camping in like 20 degree weather because my especially my nose would just be like an icicle um like my face was just so cold because it's the it was like the only thing you know exposed when you're sleeping um and i'd sleep with like a beanie on and like pulled down but when i'm like moving in my sleep my beanie was like slowly just like coming off of my head so every morning i woke up i didn't have like a beanie on anymore so i don't know if that's weird or um it would scare your partner who you're sleeping with if you have a ski mask on um, but that would have just, I thought that would have been, would have been helpful to keep, you know, just a little bit, a little bit toastier at nighttime if I had something that would actually cover my whole face. So, yeah. So, some things Riley wanted to mention. She's asleep right now, but she didn't want to mention them. Um, if you're bringing along a doggie on your camping experience, um, just to make sure you bring lots of extra treats for them lots of poop bags more than you think that you'll need make sure to bring a few of their favorite toys from home i think we bought like three or four of her toys that she plays with all the time just so she had something to kind of occupy her when we were hanging out in the tent in the evenings or if i was working in the tent or something and this might be a little extra but another thing we got is a well we didn't get it it was a gift um, someone got her is a chair like made specifically for dogs so she could sit around the campfire in a chair 
with us. It's like a little mini Papasan chair. Um, Folds up flat. Yeah. The cover comes off to wash it. Mm. It catches uh, embers from the fire very quickly. I think we burned a hole in it the first night. <laughs> but it just, it keeps her off the ground and... Uh, keeps her from wanting to like sit in our laps and stuff too. She's a lap dog. She likes being in laps. So um, yeah, this was just a really great thing to have. She slept often in it, wrapped her up in a couple blankets, and kept it nice next to the fire. We also have a, um, our tent has a little screened in porch on the front, so she would sit in her chair in the little screened in porch area too. Um, yeah, and then we already mentioned, but the mud buster thing is, certainly comes in handy if they're going to be getting their paws gross and dirty. When people go camping, obviously you have to eat and you have to come up with all these easy meals to go camping and you don't want to make a big fuss when the reality is, is you can still cook really good meals while you're camping. You just have to think about it a little bit more. Um, <coughs> something that we did very often was we bought the little mini naan rounds. So they look like little mini pizza crusts and we would just make mini pizzas with them. We'd buy a small jar of pizza sauce that would last for a couple days on our cooler, some pepperoni and some cheese. And if we just wanted a quick lunch, we would just toss a couple of those. Honestly, sometimes we didn't even melt the cheese. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just ate them room temperature because they were quick. Um, it's like a... Um, like a lunchable pizza. Yeah, you know? same kind of idea. Fancy macaroni is another good lunch or dinner option. Um, macaroni is obviously pretty, pretty easy and fast to make. But if you're like, oh, macaroni and cheese, you can always add some little accoutrements to it, like like peppers or um, we did hot dogs one time for dinner and we had like two leftover hot dogs. So we just chopped up the hot dogs and put them in the mac and cheese with some peppers and onions and yeah, just add like little things to it to make it more of like an exciting pasta dish instead of just boring old macaroni and cheese. So I decided Candace needed to be introduced to the Mountain House Dehydrated Meals from Walmart. You know, the ones in the blue bag. Um, they're decent. They're fine. They're nice and warm, but... I think they were quite good, actually. Yeah, better than decent. I don't mm -hmm. think we had a bad one. Um, they're pricey. Yeah. It's like 10 bucks for a meal. Uh, we had Chili Mac. Candace had lasagna a couple times. Lasagna is really good. Um, that one was my favorite. I tried a, a fried egg. No. Like a fried rice? Yeah, something? like a teriyaki fried rice. That was really good. Um, and we used them smartly. In other words, if we had been hiking all day and we were tired, you just boil water and you make them. So uh, if we were going to be at the campsite for a while, I would just make a nicer <laughs> dinner. Um, but on really busy nights, especially the nights when you first get there and you're setting up tents and all that kind of stuff. It's just really nice just to have to eat up water and have a nice hot meal. Denny Moore, really good. Um, if you don't know what that is, then clearly you're not from the 90s. It's older than that. <laughs> um, but it's like a beef stew, like a cheap canned beef stew. Um, we used to have it sometimes when I was really little, but I don't think I've had it since I was like 10 years old. Um, and we decided to buy a can randomly and made it with some biscuits. Mm -hmm. I just bought those like pop can biscuits and cooked the stew, got it nice and hot, put the biscuits on top, covered the Dutch oven over the fire, and made dumplings. And Really good. Yeah. I had just assumed because it was canned beef stew that it was just going to be nothing but salt. Um, but it tasted really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so a favorite of ours, because I make it so well, is chili. When we were camping, I cheated a little bit, and I just bought two packs of chili seasoning because I didn't want to bring 15 jars of spices. Uh, and it tasted good. It was fine. It's not as good as my custom chili, but um, I like cooking it over the fire, so that's what I did. I think I made it once or twice. A couple times, yeah. While we were camping, and it's just good because you can just kind of throw in everything, <laughs> and it's ready when it's ready. Um, it doesn't take long, but if you have all day, I think it tastes better if it cooks all day. Um, for breakfast, oatmeal is your new best friend. Um, again, I used to eat oatmeal as a child, but hadn't really eaten oatmeal in quite some time. But it's just quick, easy, something instead of like a, you know, a granola bar every morning if you want a little 
something that's actually like hot. Um, eat some fruit with it. You've got a good, healthy breakfast that takes like 30 minutes to make. We wanted to go through a quick list of things that we feel were must-haves on the trip that we just couldn't have done without. Um, so, headlamps. Headlamps are crucial. We took them on every hike just in case it took longer than we expected and obviously around the campsite you need headlamps. Solar lights. Obviously these are a necessity but we have these solar lights you like, they like wrap up in like a little circle thing like this and you just kind of unravel them. A circle? <laughs> and you just unravel them and we kind of picked like two trees to like string them and they kind of just add a little a little ambiance to your campsite plus lights it up a little bit more. Uh, we also had a tent light that we could not have lived with. Well, we could have. We couldn't have lived without this. We would have died. It was a great tent light. We got one that had a remote control so that way when we were ready to go to bed we just hit a couple buttons and we go right to sleep and nobody has to get out of their sleeping bag and turn off a bunch of lights. So uh, that was pretty nice. Another thing would be a clothesline for when you're hand washing all of your clothes to hang them up to dry. Um, we got one that comes with like little colorful pins and again you just like find a couple of trees, string it up, and you got a little, little clothesline. Uh, that camping sink that I mentioned, it <clears throat> collapses so it folds flat. It's also a cutting board. Mm -hmm. But I never used it for that because I already had a cutting board, but um, it's really nice when you're doing dishes just to be able to collect all the water, keep it in one spot with your, you know, your biodegradable soaps, so that way you have a safe place to dump it all, but that sink was really nice for washing dishes, just kept it simple. Pillows from home. Um, we bought new sleeping bags before this, so we also bought two of like the nine dollars and 99 cent little camping pillows and they are i don't know how anyone would sleep on them comfortably um so we returned those like the next day and then just bought our comfortable pillows that we use from home um which might be gross but i prefer to sleep uh, a water jug we had two jugs we had one that stayed at camp all the time that was five gallons and then we also had a little small three gallon I always think about like a baseball game that has like the little spout. Yeah, the little on spout it. on the front. Um, it was nice because it wasn't five gallons, so when it was full, it wasn't all that heavy. But we took it every time we went hiking, we left it in the car. So that way we could fill up our water bottles, fill up Riley's water bottle, and we just had, for the most part, unlimited water as long as we went, got back to the car. So drink as much as you want on the hike, fill it back up at the car, and go on a different hike. So I like that a lot. Um, if you have the extra space, bring extra blankets. Um, we had like one really huge like fleece blanket that we put like over top of all of our sleeping bags in the tent and it's also one of the blankets we used to cover up Riley at night. Um, just for a little, little extra warmth. I brought some oven mitt gloves, like the giant ones that you use for like barbecuing and I would just grab logs that were on fire and move the fire around. Because if you're cooking on a fire, you kind of have to set things up differently than if you're just using it for a heat source. So I use those gloves, I, I don't know, 20 times a day. You put them on, you move the log, you move the coals, you move the pots. I just, I like having them a lot. Flip-flops or sandals for showers, if you're planning on showering in like campground showers or like we use the public showers like outside of Acadia because um, personally I don't want to be stepping on that floor because you don't know if people are even in the showers. You might get some, some fungus on your feet so bring some cheap flip flops or cheap sandals or something to throw on before you use the public showers. So I am a coffee fiend. I have to have coffee very first thing in the morning. Um, I wish I had it in front of me. I don't have it right now. Um, I have a French press travel mug that I bought a few years ago when we went to Iceland. Basically, you put the grounds in the bottom, you pour the water over top, you put the lid on that has the plunger, you push the plunger down, and you drink from the cup. 
Um, I liked it because I didn't have multiple things going on. I didn't have to worry about a percolator. I didn't have to do anything else. And it also just works as a regular coffee cup. So if we went somewhere and they had coffee, I would just fill up that cup and I just wouldn't use it as a French press. So for me, a little French press travel mug is just, that's all you need. Next part of the video is we had come up with 10 goals, 10 things we wanted to try to do in the year 2023. These are in no particular order. We just wrote things down that we wanted to do, drew them out of a hat. I'm not really sure why, but we drew them out of a hat. <laughs> And then um, we each just it makes of, things a lot more fun. Yeah, it was know? more entertaining. And then we each picked a couple. And then anything that we both put in, we were like, okay, well, we have to do this. So the first thing is, in no particular order, a difficult hike, um, like a high elevation, long term hike, like maybe something a little scary. Something that makes us uncomfortable, mm -hmm. um, like Angels Landing and Zion kind of thing, um, Mount Rainier where you need like ice picks and you're like fending off avalanches and stuff. Well, like for instance, well, Andrew's been on way more hikes than I have and much harder hikes than I have. But when we were in Washington over the summer, we tried to do a hike that was off of one of the hikes we did that was like really, I'm I can't think of the name of it now, off of the Bridal Veil Falls hike. Oh, Lake Serene? Yeah. And it was like, 3,000 feet elevation or something crazy like that and we were like let's let's just see like how it is because you had to go part of the way up the hike we already did to go on it so since we were there um but it was just it was way too strenuous and we also didn't we felt very constrained with time and um but I like to do like like a challenging hike like that like with a lot of elevation um yeah, just something that's gonna gonna challenge me, kind of put me out of my comfort zone a little bit. And then another thing that I think we actually both put in the hat was snowshoeing. We're both really interested in, in trying that out. Uh, on a similar vein that we also both wrote down is we want to go skiing. We both want to try downhill skiing, but more more to me, I would be interested in cross-country skiing for my first time before I start going down steep hills, but... I'm very interested in cross-country skiing. Yeah, too. skiing just seems really fun, so we've never and done also it. also scary. Yeah, and we just want to try break it. a leg? I don't know. Who knows? You might be the next Sonny Bobo. Doing some skiing? No, no, I don't want to end up like Sonny Bobo. Well, that's just, that's just good sense right there. Yeah. Everyone I know who skis is dead. Another thing, kind of along the lines of a hard hike but slightly different would be I want to do a backpacking trip. Now this might be like a one or two nighter, not like a you know, expedition into the woods or anything, but I've never been backpacking. We're not gonna be able to do it in Montana. She's already said that she will never go backpacking where there are grizzly bears. I'll never bears. go camping where there are grizzly bears. I won't camp in a campground where there are grizzly bears. So we'll probably start locally where there's just black bears and mountain lions, but we both want to do an ATV tour, like ATV side by side. We just mm -hmm. think a, an ATV off-road tour would be a lot of fun to do this year. Horseback riding is another one. I've never been horseback riding. I think I rode a pony once when I was little, but that's about the extent of my horseback riding experience. I've been like a handful of times, but I was a young kid, so I don't really remember that on the beach with my long hair flowing like Fabio. <laughs> um, a fan boat tour, which is very specific to a very specific region <laughs> of America. Um, probably won't be doing that up again in Maine, but uh, I went on a fan boat tour once when I was a kid. I had a great time. I know Candace has been at least once, um, but we've never been together and we've never been able to bring our own alligator bait before. A cold water swim or like a, a polar plunge kind that. of scenario. I, I did that already. I did that. Well, I know. I'm like more of like a higher scale, not like not like a pond, not like an Airbnb. Understand that? I'm thinking more like a cold water swim as opposed to like a little a little dip in like something cold. I don't know what I'm thinking in my head, but yeah. I think she wants like 
before we get in, we have to like bust the frozen lake <laughs> up with axes and then jump into the lake. I think that's what she wants. That's fine. This is a silly one. Uh, we want to fly. <laughs> we have not literally with our arms. We have not been on a flight since November <laughs> of 2019. So we're really hoping to fly somewhere this year. That would be nice. Mm -hmm. We miss it. We we enjoy flying, so we we miss well, it. Well. We enjoy flying. I enjoy flying. It's fun. I miss places that flights take you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really enjoy the journey of getting there. And the last thing on the list is we want to kayak in at least 10 new places this year that we've never been before. Um, we both really enjoyed kayaking, especially like in Acadia National Park a few times. Um, yeah, and Riley seems to enjoy it as well. It's just it's kind of nice and relaxing, and we've got the the carrier things on the car now, so it's easy to take them everywhere. And yeah, okay. So, what are we doing in twenty twenty three, or where are we going? I should say, I guess. So we have two places officially booked that we're probably definitely going to go to. One of them being the last week of March, we are going to Savannah, Georgia. Um, which neither of us have ever been to Savannah, so we're looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. We're super excited for Savannah um, because there's a ton of ghost stuff down there, and we both love paranormal things, so we're hoping to be able to take a, some sort of a ghost tour while we're down there. Mm -hmm. Plus, we both really like Charleston, South Carolina, and I, I imagine that it's quite a bit like Charleston. Similar, and if okay. not, we'll find out together. And we're staying pretty close to like the, the downtown area, so I think we'll be able to walk to a lot of places. Um, and then the second place we have booked is in like mid-July, we're going for a week to the Outer Banks with all of Andrew's family. I imagine we'll probably film a couple of things while we're there, but it's kind of more like a chill, like relaxing Vacation. Beach vacation. Yeah, but we might film some. The next place-ish, February, just found out the other day that I have jury duty in February, so things are a little bit up in the air right now. Um, we're thinking that the three of us are going to travel up to maybe Michigan and Ohio area. Um, we wrote places we wanted to visit, folded up, put it in a hat. Again, the hat just comes back, and we both <laughs> wrote Michigan. Um, we both love cold weather. We both have some snow stuff in mind. Um, so, yeah. I don't think we had anything specific that we wanted to do in those places. We just, I think Michigan's really pretty, probably. I don't know. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's really ugly. Um, but yeah, and then obviously you have to kind of drive through <laughs> all of Ohio. And we haven't, we haven't been to that state yet. Um, we were also potentially leaning towards maybe like going to Florida after Savannah or before Savannah, since we're basically be right there. Um, fan boat. Yeah, fan boat. Alligator bait. There'll also probably be a pretty good time weather-wise to go to Florida before it gets like very, very hot. Mm -hmm. um, we're also probably doing a trip with some of my family in the fall, like October-ish for a couple of weeks, um, probably somewhere out west. We tend to like out west. <laughs> it's kind of where we've been going for the past three years, out west. Um, I would love to spend a lot of time in Colorado. Um, we went to Denver for like three days last year on our way back home from Washington. Um, and I've been to Denver like probably close to 10 years ago with my dad before um, and we rented a car and went to like a couple of different places but I've never really explored too much like outside of the main Denver area. I like to do like some hikes in Rocky Mountain National Park and yeah just explore some new places. We also talked about potentially <laughs> Oregon Mm -hmm. or like Northern California. Um, we're in the super early planning stages 
for that trip because it's in the fall. So, um, just a couple different ideas of, of places we'd love to go. So, another trip that we're talking about doing this fall um, would be potentially getting on a plane and going somewhere. We're going to keep things super vague. Maybe a green place with lots of Guinness. Where could that be? And maybe some haggis, but mm. super early planning stages, so we're not gonna not gonna give too much away yet. I think after this video comes out, we might try to do um, a couple things like in this area because we live in a in a pretty area. Um, maybe some hikes or something around here. Maybe film Candace's first backpacking experience. Maybe. Maybe. We don't really know what our like intention for our travels are so much. I think we mentioned one time Riley's goal was to eat a fry in every state. So like I guess our goal is to eventually fry, yeah. is eventually go to every state. Now, I don't know if this is confusing or if I should say this, but we have actually been to lots of states. I think, already? I think there's only like 13 <laughs> states Candace and I together have not been to. And then we've been to like a few states like separately, like before we were together. Um, but Riley hasn't been to like all of them with us, so we're kind of doing like, let's go to all the states with Riley again and actually like film something in every mm -hmm. state. Um, so it's not necessarily like every new state is like brand new to us. I mean, some of them are. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot that we haven't been to as well. But And we still don't know how we're getting Riley to Hawaii yet. Um, Spoiler that to be alert. That's probably going to be the very last state. <laughs> Alaska, that's no big deal. We could drive. We love to drive. But, yeah. <clears throat> So yeah, it's just kind of, we, I guess our goal is to eventually go to every state, mm -hmm. but we also want to do like, or well, I want to go like out of the country as well. So does I. Not like every video on this channel will always include a trip that Riley is on. Mm -hmm. She didn't come to New York. Yeah. Most of them probably will. If there's any places that you guys recommend, any state, you know, maybe give some specifics in the comments down below, but uh, we're always interested in where you guys recommend There's something this cool to do in yeah. the state. If there's something like a hidden gem that you're like, oh my gosh, when you come to Missouri, you have to see the world's largest bottle of dish soap or you know stuff like that that's more of the stuff that I'm into personally so um, also hikes we love to hike Riley loves to hike so if you guys have any recommendations just drop them in the comments below all right well I guess we're done um, so we'll see you somewhere <laughs> thanks for watching Riley Roams Please subscribe to our channel to keep up with all of our travels. Don't forget to hit that like button and leave us a comment below about your favorite part of this video.